Hi, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, Mayor Robert Sullivan here. Today, we are filming the 30th episode of Our Brockton, and the title speaks for itself. It's Our Brockton, it's our community, it's our, our home. Uh, my guest uh, has actually been on the show before, uh, retired Fire Chief Ken Galligan, who serves a good as president of the Historic Society. We had a wonderful tour with, uh, with Chief Galligan recently of the Historic Society up on North Pearl Street. Today, the chief is back for a wonderful, wonderful a uh, detailed tour of the fire museum, which also sits on the same property up on North Pearl Street. So, Chief, I want to thank you for what you've done for the city of Brockton uh, over your career, a true public servant. I also want to thank you, Chief, for taking the time to educate and inform all Brocktonians of the wonderful, wonderful museums that we have up on North Pearl Street. Again, the Historic uh, Society Museum, which really tells a lot about Brockton. And again, the museum that's dedicated for fire services in the city of Brockton. So, here we go. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Brockton Fire Museum. We're located at 216 North Pearl Street in Brockton, and we're part of the Brockton Historical Society. So this segment is the runner-up to the segment that was filmed a couple weeks ago at the uh, Historical Society Homestead on North Pearl Street. So this building that we're in today is known as the Brockton Historical Society Fire Museum. This building was built in 1990. It's a relatively new building. And this building was built to house the Protector 3 hand tub. That was a fire engine that was used in Brockton from about 1856, Civil War time, until about 1885, when it was replaced by a steam-driven fire engine. So behind me is the Protector 3 hand tub. And if you look over my shoulder, you can see this machine is actually a pumping engine that is drawn by a slew of volunteer firefighters, farmers, anybody that could pull the machine. And the brakes that you see standing up on the side right now actually will come down on the side of the machine. There will be 10 or 15 men on each side of the machine and those brakes will be pumped up and down. And there's two pistons in that machine that will draw water from a pond, a river or a lake and discharge water out the hose out the front. So when there was a fire back in the day in the 1800s, somebody would have to go to the church, ring the bell to alert everybody that was a fire. And everybody would then come to the station, grab this machine, drag it to the fire and pump water from a source and spray water on the fire. So if you didn't live near a water source, you were pretty much out of luck. So throughout the downtown area in Brockton, there was what was called cisterns, which were almost like underground cesspools where the stormwater in the street would fill these up and they could draft water from those for the pump or they could draft water out of a pond or a river or a lake. So it was a hand operated pump and it was called Protector 3. It was located at the corner of Main and Pleasant Street, pretty much where the central fire station is today on Pleasant Street. That was in service, this machine was in service from 1856 to about 1885 when it was replaced by the steam engine. And history shows us that this machine was sold to Holstein, Iowa, a small town in Iowa that used it until 1899. They put it up for sale and the Protector Club repurchased the machine and it came back to Brockton. It was used for muster purposes and musters were uh, competitions that uh, the hand tub owners and operators would compete with each other and they would win a trumpet or some kind of a prize for the longest stream of water. So this was in operation till probably in the late 18, uh, 1950s to early 60s when the musters kind of lost favor and the machine was put in storage. Uh, it was put up for sale and the Historical Society purchased it and the idea was to build this building to house that machine. So we are very fortunate in Brockton that we have our original hand-drawn fire engine from 1856. It's now back in the city and it is owned by the Historical Society. So hopefully it'll never leave the city again. The other machine that we have here in the room with us is a similar hand tub. 
and it is known as the Enterprise 2, and it is owned by the Enterprise Club in Campello, Campello Veteran Firemen's Association. So that machine is very similar to the Protector 3, and it was used exclusively for uh, musters and competition and see who could draw or draft water and throw a stream the longest distance. So the building was built to house these machines, and you're going to see as we tour around the building that there's an awful lot of memorabilia that's in this building that a lot of it came from the Brockton Fire Department. So we're going to start now and show you the original 1922 fire alarm system, a computer-operated system here in Brockton. The box that Bob is showing you is known as a cottage-style box. Uh, this is an older box where in order to sound the alarm, you have to actually open the box and pull the handle. So there's a little white handle that he's going to show you here in a second. And when you pull that handle down, it's going to transmit a box number to fire alarm. And every box in the city has a four-digit number on it. And this box is box 2226. So when Bob pulls that handle down, you're going to see the code wheel on the inside of the box is going to start transmitting box 2226, and that's going to come into fire alarm. Okay, now I can swing up there. And you want to go right down onto that tape. So the tape and fire alarm now will be punching out box 6222. That's the box number that Bob has sounded. In fire alarm, the fire alarm operator or the dispatcher will now notify all the fire stations that there is an alarm coming in. So in fire alarm, the operator would hit this button right here, which will open all the trap doors on the slide poles. It'll turn on all the lights in the fire station, and it'll shut off all the electric stoves. So when I hit this, you'll hear a bell ring. That is to warn all six stations that there's an alarm coming in. I will then set up box 2226 on the transmitter, and I'm going to send that box number out to all the fire stations. And then as a backup, it will be retransmitted again on what's called slow time, the same box number, box 2226. Uh, two, Over in the corner is a replica of an actual watch desk from the old fire station. And they have a tape, they have a bell, very similar to this tape. The firefighter on duty would look at that tape, he would read box 2226, he would look on the running card right there, and if this company was going to respond on the box alarm to Bob's location, they would pull that lever up there, the doors would open up, and out the trucks would go. Now, from the time Bob pulls that box until they're going out the door is usually less than 90 seconds. That's how fast things happen. You'll notice here that Bob is at a location. We know exactly where he is. We don't know what his problem is, but we know where he is, and we're going to respond to his location. All of this was done by bells. There was not one single word spoken. So we kind of refer to this telegraph system that's in effect, or still in operation in the city, as our multilinguistic call box system. In effect, if you don't speak English, you can still pull that fire alarm and help will come to you. So that's how fast you can call for help. It can be pulled for a fire, it could be pulled for an accident, somebody having a heart attack. Whatever you need help for, that's what that box is there for. There's over 500 of them still in the city. They operate very well. Today, most of the alarms that we received are received through 911 through cell phones, telephones, or whatever. So this used to be the primary system. 
It's kind of uh, taken a, a, a back seat and is now a backup system. But in the event of a failure of the 911 system, which has happened, that system will be the one that will call for help. Also part of the uh, fire museum is our display, which commemorates the Strand Theater fire back in March 10th, 1941. Uh, that was a fire that was located in a theater that was on School Street, pretty much right opposite City Hall, where in the early morning hours, uh, a fire broke out in the basement and the fire extended up the walls and into the ceiling and into the roof area. And as a result of that fire, the roof collapsed and came down on top of the firefighters that were working on the balcony. Uh, because of that collapse, 13 firefighters were killed in this fire. It's one of the largest loss of life for firefighters uh, in the history of, the, of this country other than 9-11. So the pictures that you see on the wall here are pictures of what the theater looked like after the collapse. The memorial that you see in front of you is a replica of the memorial that stands at City Hall Plaza. And that is re uh, supposed to represent a firefighter who is kneeling and he is reflecting on the loss of the 13 firefighters. And the helmet that you see on the bottom uh, has the number 13 on it. And the helmet on the top of his head has the BFD. Those helmets are exact replicas of what the helmets looked like uh, at the time of the fire. That's what the firefighters wore. So that strand bill that you see over there was presented to us by a citizen here in Brockton who had that at their home. Uh, that was a bill that showed the, pl the plays and the shows that were at the Strand Theater. It's in excellent condition and it really adds to the display up here. If you can see this picture up on the right here, that is actually the corner of Main and School Street with City Hall in the background. And when you look down School Street, the theater was located on the right-hand side of School Street between City Hall and Main Street. The big building on the corner is gone, and that is now a vacant parking lot. So this was a very significant piece of history in the city of Brockton, a huge loss of life uh, for the fire department. 13 firefighters uh, lost their lives the night of this fire. And this display that you have down the bottom here that we'll pick up on is a display that shows the Strand Theater Fire book that has been written about the Strand Theater Fire. It shows an ax that was actually recovered from the rubble of the fire. And the picture that you see in the background is a piece of anthracite coal that was presented to us by a firefighter from Scranton, Pennsylvania, who, who carved different memorabilia from coal. So he took a piece of anthracite coal, carved that memorial, presented it to Brockton. It's under a glass case, and it is located in the rotunda of City Hall. And that is the memorial uh, for the Strand Theater. Prior to the memorial that we put outside, it's uh, on the plaza in 2008, that was the principal memorial that we had for this disaster. So looking over my shoulder, you can see we have a very large collection here of shoulder patches that has been presented to us from the South Weymouth Naval Air F uh, Station. When the station closed, the fire department had this as their collection and they wanted it to be preserved, so they presented it to us here at the fire museum. It's a pretty impressive collection. It's only one of an awful lot of fire memorabilia that we now have in this fire museum. I would encourage anyone that wants to see the history of the fire service to come and visit us on the second and fourth Sunday afternoon of each month. We're usually here from around noontime till three or four o'clock. Uh, if there is a group that would like to have a tour of this building, uh, we can take you around and show you an awful lot of material that you're not seeing today. Uh, but we are here, we're here to preserve the history of the Brockton Fire Department and to preserve the history of the fire service in general. So thank you for bearing with us, and I hope to see you someday here at the museum.